Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside uh, A war on the real, baby, look out Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside uh, A war on the real, baby, look Welcome out Welcome back, family. I have a little brain teaser here, something to think about It's gonna be a short one This is not a whole meal, but this is just gonna be a cerebral snack Welcome back to the Lance Curve Show podcast. I want to talk about this short snippet of what happened in Texas recently. It's a white woman, but look, we got to talk about everybody when it pertains to us or if it's a situation that's going to have an effect on our lives. So I see, I have a little foresight with this, but this seems to be a minor thing, but it can go deep. And we need to think about this in our personal situations. My, my throat is a lot stronger. Probably tomorrow it'll sound back normal again, but it is a little, eh, I just woke up. Here it is. This is a link from the New York Post, and I'll drop it in the description area below. A pregnant Texas woman who was given a traffic ticket for driving solo in an HOV lane. For those out of the country uh, or out of the United States, the HOV lane is an express lane on the highway where you have to have more than one person to justify your presence there, like carpooling three, four people. But it has to be you can't be one person and drive in the HOV lane because you might as well get back in the regular traffic. That's for people who are condensing down their passengers and they have the right to go through that lane because they um have more than one. So there it is. Let me just say it again. A pregnant Texas woman who was given a traffic ticket for driving solo in an HOV lane intends to fight the citation, arguing her fetus should be considered a separate person given the Lone Star State's views on abortion. The Lone Star State is Texas, y'all. Mother to be, Brandy Batone, I hope that's the pronunciation. 34 told the Dallas Morning News she was given the ticket on June 29th after being pulled over by police while driving on a highway near the city. I was driving to pick up my son. I knew I couldn't be a minute late, so I took the HOV lane, she told the newspaper. As I exited the HOV lane, there was a checkpoint at the end of the exit. I slammed on my brakes and I was pulled over by police. The cop asked her if she had a passenger with her, and she responded that, in fact, she did. I pointed to my stomach and said, my baby girl is right here. She is a person, Batone of Plano, Texas, told the newspaper. He said, oh, no, it's got to be two people outside of the body. Batone then mentioned the recent Supreme Court ruling that overturned the constitutional right to an abortion. But she was dismissed by one of the officers, she said. One officer kind of brushed me off when I mentioned this is a living child, according to everything that's going on with the overturning of Roe versus Wade. So I don't know why you're not seeing that, I said, she told the morning news. He was like, I don't want to deal with this, he said. Ma'am, it means two persons outside of the body, she added. This has my blood boiling. How could this be fair? According to the new law, this is life, Batone said, adding that she intends to fight the ticket. The Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade last month paved the way for a trigger law to go into effect in Texas that bans abortion from the moment of fertilization. Some clinics in the state were allowed to continue to offer abortions for up to six weeks in pregnancy after a judge granted them a temporary restraining order at the end of June. But the legal victory for the clinics was only expected to last a few months until a higher court vacates the order. Wow. But wait a second. I think everywhere in the United States, I, I think everywhere, let's just throw this in there, right? Before Roe versus Wade was overturned, right? Because we have to speak in loose terms. I'm not going to be long with this. We have to speak in loose terms because each state has their twist on everything. But if a woman was murdered, right? And she was pregnant. Don't they charge that murderer with the death of a child, a living being? They get two counts of murder or whatever degree it is. 
And this is before Roe versus Wade. So in that case, they're acknowledging that that life inside the body is a child. No matter, right after fertilization, if you can prove that woman was pregnant and you murdered that woman, you killed two people. Right? So why isn't it like that now? Right? So I'm in favor of the woman with this ticket because you can't have it both ways. Now for us as black people in America, this is the same kind of thing across the board. And I wanna say that, yes, I do feel the overturning of Roe versus Wade was the fact that Caucasians fear genetic annihilation because they're only 9% of the world population. They might be the majority in America, but that's, that, that's, that's there in that one little spot. But worldwide, they are not the majority. But many of us, as I've said before, we feel like we are the minority because this is beaten to our heads in America. So even when we come out to places like the motherland in Africa, where they're definitely the minority, many of us who have the coonized mentality dip our head and, and, and do the shuffle and act like a coon, like this parasite is something mighty worldwide. No. It gives that illusion, like when you watch The Wizard of Oz and you hear that mighty booming voice and it's frightening and you think this is some all uh, uh, omnipotent power. It's just a little white man behind a, a, a curtain with a dog, the, the dog ran behind there and saw him pulling levers. See, so it's all a facade. But all, understand that that tide that goes up, that goes high, helps all the boats to rise. So while they may feel it's a victory for their uh, a genetic annihilation reversal, understand that no, no abortions means that we're going to have more of a population, but don't think they're not ready for that. Okay? Just like the police officers that were discovered not too long ago on their recordings, they didn't even have enough sense to cut the recordings off, and they both were speaking, two or three of them were speaking about the Black Lives Matter movement which is something of a sham, and I always said that from the beginning. But how these Caucasians are taking it, the police officers, they said, oh, something to the effect of, I'm going to go out soon and buy more assault rifles. Yeah, we got to be ready, because when the race war ticks off, we're going to try to wipe out as much, as much of them as we can, much of those niggas as we can. Much of those effing niggas as we can and set them back two or three generations, if not wiping off the face of the earth. Law enforcement, right? So while they want to rise up their numbers, fertility and, and, and population, they do have a flip side of a plan that signaled more assaults, more murders, the overturning of Roe versus Wade is a signal to the black community that they're going to come at us more because it's not just about abortions because no abortions means more black children too. So how do they even it out? They'll never catch up. You understand? Because those few babies that are white that have been spared from abortion, that doesn't stop these white women from having fertility problems. They still got an issue. They still are weak and diminishing. So that may slow it down a little bit, but this is going to really open the floodgates for more black children to come into this earth. Right? And so we know that, that underground, we know that on the black market, there will still be abortions performed in some really ragged situations that are not sanitary. Well, we shouldn't even be having that conversation right now. We should be building black families, black community, right? And to be united and to bring our community worldwide back and to understand that no matter what you call yourself, this is a nation, a worldwide nation. So don't, fight, don't fall for the okie doka Eidos and FBA and I'm indigenous and I'm that when actual, in actuality, the Gullah people who are the first people to land here in America, right? So some say they were already here, but the Gullah people who are the first to land in America from outside of America, you don't hear them running their mouth and I'm this and I'm that. They the real thing. They have their land, they have their community, they have their own language, their own culture. 
So these people who have an identity pro uh, 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 issue, crisis, who want to fit in here and fit in there because they really don't want to be part of the black nation. Those in Africa are your brothers and your sisters on a worldwide level. We should be glad that we got the hookup all over the planet. Instead of turning our nose up while these white folks are manipulating laws and playing chess. And we're not even playing checkers. We're barely playing tic-tac-toe. So get hip to what's going on. There is a backlash coming. The overturning of Roe versus Wade is for the population growth of Caucasians in America. Right? But it's also going to open the floodgates for many of our sisters to have children where they may have been considering abortions. And I hope you don't go in the black market. You should come to a place like the motherland and collectively get some land and have all the babies you want. Their children being born here left and right. And I love to see it. And they can play their games in America, but they can't do it here like that. Although they're trying to do it with birth control and food and chemicals and all of this stuff. Religion wanting you to bleach your skin, straighten your hair and hate yourself. You hate yourself so much, some of our sisters, that it makes it easy after the practices of hating yourself to kill a child and act as though it's not a life. So let's look closer at all of these different things. So the story started out as being one of a white woman. But I had to look a little deeper than that. And I just want to bring that point up. We got more content coming. My voice will sound a little better. But I just want to say salute to my brothers and much love to my sisters. Let's stay on point. The goal is the black family. Building black community. Black men back in the house. Black men. Raise your vibration. Stop looking at sisters as playthings. They are very beautiful. They are very sexy. But that's not just what you see when you see them. It's not just the sex sexiness or the body parts. It's their essence. It's their power when they're vibrating correctly. Even those sisters that you see that are not really where they should be, you have to give them respect and nurture them in their spirit. Sure, I hate to see our sisters on a low vibration exposing themselves or whatnot. The visuals look nice, but it hurts at the same time. Some of us have become clowns, minstrel men and women, and they love to see us vibrate low. There's certain things you should not see on a woman in the street. You should be wondering if you're thinking that way, like, whoa, I, she's a got a beautiful personality, beautiful face, everything. Wow, I could only imagine. Let's bring imagination back, y'all. Let's bring respect back, y'all, because those are the things that are going to help to build our community. Yeah, I like to have fun like the next person, and you know what I mean. But it's about the respect and building. Build something righteous, and the fun you have will be even more intense, if you know what I mean. Anyway, take care, y'all. We'll be back with more. That's all I got for you. On to the next one, Lance Curve out. Much respect, love, and light. Peace. Make sure to check out the boldest blog at landscurve.com and follow Scurve on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube under Lance Scurve.